everyone and welcome to this video on how to make a table in Word per APA guidelines. I'm making this video for my research class right now, but hopefully it can be helpful to others as well. So the first thing that we want to do when we're making a table is to have a little bit of text right before it. So I'm going to make a heading uh, I mean a title for the table and I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Um, you can just fill it in with your title which would be something about the methods used in the studies for the literature review if you're in my class. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to go ahead and select any words or spaces that are there. The reason for that is because we want to go ahead and make sure that all the line spacing is uh, correct because different word programs have different defaults if you haven't changed them or maybe you have but they don't align with APA. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and select 1.0 as the line space. Sometimes the default is this and sometimes it's that. So in any case, we're gonna make sure that it's checked. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that again. Um, and then we're gonna go down here and where you see it says add space before paragraph and then for mine it says remove space after paragraph. The reason mine has this is because the, or the reason it's selected is because my default has a space after each paragraph. But in APA, we don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and select it out. And you can see when you go back that now it's gone. If yours says remove up here for the space before the paragraph, then go ahead and do that as well. We want no spaces, no um, unusual line spacings. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and that's going to move my cursor where I'm going to start my table. I go up to insert and by the way this might look different if you're on a Mac or you have a different version of Word but in any case look for wherever you can insert a table. So in my Word program uh, there's this uh, convenient table menu option and I go ahead and left click on it and it allows me to make a table of any size essentially and it's okay if it doesn't have the correct number of rows that we will need because we can always add later. So for the table I'm making I'm going to have one column for the study author names and then a second column for sample, a third for method, and a fourth for analysis. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select as many as I can. And you'll see it gives us this nice little grid here. Um, one thing that I do is I like to make the table, um, the left side margin, align better with the text. So if you hover your mouse over the whatever line you want to change, you'll see this double-sided arrow um, up here. Then you left clicked and hold, and then you'll see this line, this uh, dotted line up here. That then you can move around to put wherever you want. So I'm gonna put it right here and let go. And it moved it to where I want it to be. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and fill in my table. So for the table that I'm making, it's gonna have study authors, sample, methods, and analysis okay so when i have that then i'm going to bold and then i just noticed that my font isn't in the correct um, style that i want so i'm going to go ahead and select everything i would have done this in the beginning but i forgot but it's okay we can do it now we go up here to font and we select times new roman 12 point font okay so you change that up here Okay, now it's the way I want it to be. So I'm just going to make up some study authors and you want to make sure in a lit review situation like the one that I'm making the table for that it's all chronological um, or alphabetical order. There has to be some order and typically um, alphabetical is good. So I'm just going to start making names here. Acevedo, 2001. Let's say you're at Rubio 
Aha. And fresh. I need to realize, wait, I need more columns. I mean, I need more rows. So you go ahead and select the last row and you right click and it gives you these options here after you um, hover your mouse over the word insert, insert columns, etc. We want to insert a row below, so we left click and there you have it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then a trick is you can actually highlight and then do control Y to get more um, rows because control Y repeats the very last thing that you did. So now we have the 10 um, rows that we need. So now I'm just going to copy this and paste it here um, just so we have something to fill in. But in any case, okay, we go back up to here where it says sample. And for sample in, in this class, we have two pieces of information that we need. The sample size, and so I'm gonna make up n equals 340 people, and it automatically capitalizes it, so I'm gonna lowercase it. And then I need the second piece of information, which is what type of sampling method was used. And in this case, I'm gonna pretend it was random sampling. Now we have these two pieces of information, and just sitting here, it kind of looks awkward. So I'm gonna go up to bullets here, and left click and it opens up these options. You can select the rounded bullet or the square bullet. And these two are your main options. I like squares, I'm gonna do that. But notice how it moved everything over to the center and that doesn't look very good and plus it's gonna take up too much space in my column. So what I do is I go up here to my ruler and by the way, if you don't have your ruler selected, you can go under view and make sure that ruler is selected so you can have this here. And the reason for that is then you can click on, left click on these arrows and move your bullets to wherever you want them to be, okay? So I'm just gonna take this information, copy it and paste it just so we have something filled in. Of course, yours is going to look different. And then the three pieces of information that we need are, oh wait, okay, another trick. If you select, copy, and paste everywhere, then you'll have your bullet points already arranged and you can go here and change what you need, okay? So I'm going to just put in the information that's required. So you have to have information here on whether it's primary versus secondary. And if secondary, the name of the source. And then you have whether it's longitudinal or cross-sectional. And then you have what type of data. So were they administrative, administrative records, um, survey data, Etc. And then, how were they? How were the data collected? And that would be interviews, observations, questionnaires, all of those types. Now, notice here I said data. How were the data collected? Were data were collected? How data? the word is plural. So in your papers, don't ever write data is or data was. It's data are or data were, okay? Anyways, so that's the pieces of information that we need here. So I'm just going to select and put them here. And whoa, that made it really, really long. But that's okay, we'll fix that. Okay. When it comes to analysis, we just need one piece of information and that is the most significant, I'm not sorry, not significant, most sophisticated analysis done. So remember, if they did bivariates and a multivariate, you only have to put the multivariate here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put it all the way here just so we have something filled in. Okay. 
So the next thing you want to do is fix the column widths, okay? Because we don't want a table that's this long. So we notice that, okay, with the study authors, we can kind of make that a little smaller. Same with sample. There's not a whole lot of information here, but there's a lot in method. Um, and there's not as much in analysis. So we want to make sure that our table looks something like this. And it's okay if it goes on to the next page because I'll show you what to do with that. Okay, so here we have all of the information that we need. And I think I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, okay, so what do we do? What do we do with the fact that we have this table that goes on for two pages? We have to do what I call breaking the table. In other words, we're going to break this table into two parts. I'm going to select the part that I want to be separate from the rest of the table. And then I'm just going to cut it out. I use Control X, but you can go up to Home and use this function here. And then I'm going to hit Enter, go to the next page, and I'm going to repeat whatever my table title is. And then I'm going to hit enter and paste, okay? So this is very important. You wanna make sure you put the table title here and then paste the rest. And then all you do is go up here to where the first row uh, is identifying each column and you copy, select the first row here and hit paste. And then it all puts it, puts it all nicely there. In doing that, I noticed that these column labels need to be um, entered, or you have to hit the return um, key on your keyboard because we want it to look nice and clean like this. So I go up here. See, I should have done this before so that my copy and paste onto the second page would already be formatted, but oh well. Okay. So now you have these two tables that are continuation, one of which is a continuation of the first. So what I want to do then is to indicate to the reader that this is a continuation of that. So I go here and I say table one continued. Notice where I'm putting this word, continued, right before the period here. Okay, it doesn't go after the period, it goes right here. <laughs> okay, and then you have your table title, whatever it is. So, okay, once you have that, then it's time to format it um, so it looks clean and in APA style. So we're gonna do this twice because now we have two tables. Okay, first I'm going to come up here, and by the way, you don't wanna do this while you're still working on the content of the table. Do this last because um, we're gonna be getting rid of all of these lines and it might be hard to know where you started and, and stopped. Okay, so we select, so if you click anywhere in the table, this little doohickey appears, this little double-sided arrow. You click on it, it selects the entire table. You can select the table however you want according to you know what you're used to. Okay, when you select the whole table, you get the, this uh, highlighted ribbon up here. Um, not ribbon, a menu option, whatever you want to call it. Okay, anyway, we click on it, left click on it, and now we can do all sorts of things to our tables. If we were being fancy, you know, we have all of these options, but we're not being fancy, we're being APA. So <laughs> you go up there, and under borders, you select no border, and that gets rid of all the borders. My web program has these blue dotted grid lines here that help me see where all my data are. Yours may not. These will not print. Like if I were to print this right now, it would, there would be no lines here. Um, in any case, we just have to add three lines to each table. So we go up here and we select the first row because that's where two of our lines are going to go. I go up here to the line style. Let me show you that again. When I click on here, you see, or I just hover my mouse, it says line style. I left click and I have all of these options. So um, the default is usually single. I was playing around with this, so that's why it showed a double, but I'm gonna show you what it would look like normally. So it's the single line at half point is selected. So I go to borders and I put this line on the bottom border. I could do this 
via this little pen mechanism, but I, I don't know, my hand shakes sometimes, so I don't find that helpful. I just like using this option here. Okay, so then now that I have this line already selected as a single line, I'm gonna go up here or go down here and do the same thing. I'm going to do no border, select the top row, go up here and do bottom border, okay? Then I go back up, I select my top row again, and this time under line options, I do the double line. I go up here to where the borders are and I do top border. So that puts in a double line at the top. I also need uh, the double line at, um, at the bottom of the table. So I go to borders, doo -doo -doo, bottom, okay? And this is all you need, these three lines, and then of course everything inside the table. So I'm gonna do that again here. I'm gonna select, well actually since the bottom one is already selected here, I'm gonna go up here and just hit bottom border, select up here, go back up, top border, okay? And that's it, and I'm done. So that is how you make a table in Word per APA. Uh, I showed you how to uh, insert the table, how to enter information into the table, and then how to format it, and then also how to break a table in two, okay? So this is what you need to do for your papers, and I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class or in the comments below. Thank you.